Hello guys, Omni here. Since this is the last season of Arrow, I'm going to do what I did with the final season of Game of Thrones, and we're going to talk about and just kind of give our thoughts or reactions to each episode until we come to the clues, especially since this ep this season's, what, only 10 episodes long? I can't wait to see how this concludes. And so far, if you haven't watched tonight's episode, tune out. I All of these will be spoiler-ridden. So... Here's your warning. Watch the episode if you haven't. If you have, stay and let's just dive right into this. I am already just like, sorry if it's like the end of this episode. We'll get to it, but I'm still like just holy crap with the end of that. So we open up. We're in Earth Two, uh, the where. <laughs> We had uh, Laurel, the current Laurel, who was uh, Black Siren, later becoming the next Black Canary, went back to her Earth to kind of redeem herself, go on this redemption arc. Uh, and we return to Lian Yu with a very, very familiar opening, kind of a recreation of the opening scene from season one with Oliver on the island. Uh, he comes up, lights the pyre on the island, gets signaled, rescued, all that good stuff. Except in this Earth, instead of... The Deathstroke mask on the island with the arrow through the eye. It was a Batman mask. So that was interesting and awesome to see. Um, but he returns home and finds that Walter's not there. But uh, Moira has remarried with Merlin. Um, and who is not bad in this. But Thea had passed away, you know, can, because Oliver wasn't there to kick her out of her drug habit when he came back. Because this is... This is not just five years after the island. This is five years and an additional five for the length of the show up until this point. So, no, wait. It's like they said 12 years. So, in this timeline, he's coming in at real time. If their Oliver died on the island, from what we know, or died on the gambit. But he came back. Uh, so, 12 years has passed since the gambit went down. And Thea succumbing to her depression because Oliver wasn't there to save her. In this world died of a drug overdose John Barrowman amazing to see him back I love him so much I've he's just amazing and I'm so glad to see him in this because he's one of my favorite parts of Arrow in the earlier seasons and even like later on even though he kind of became more of a throwaway character in the end but John Barrowman himself I just love the dude especially ever since Doctor Who is Captain <laughs> Jack Harkness I almost said Jack Sparrow uh, in this version of the Earth, the Dark Archer this time around is Tommy. Tommy is here, and they are now brothers-in-law, brothers, 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 stepbrothers. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so Oliver's trying to investigate because apparently the Monitor sent him to Earth 2 because this is the only Earth in the, uni in the multiverse that has a specific particle that they need for something. The monitor is not telling Oliver what it's for or what the reason he needs it for is, but he's just he's like you trust me, right? Do it. You're you're not doubting your mission, right? I'm bringing you here. Do what I tell you. Get get the particles. Get these dark particle things. And so he's going after it. Apparently Mer, uh, Queen Merlin Industries makes this thing. Uh, but Tolly, Tommy's using it to reenact his own undertaking like Merlin did in season 1. Uh, however, the motivation is a little bit different. In this one, Tommy's doing this to exact vengeance on the Glades because he blames them for the drug epidemic that took Thea's life. We have some awesome moments in this universe. Uh, Thea and Dinah are working as bodyguards and kind of a corrupt cop kind of thing uh, under Tommy's kind of uh, tutelage. But Diggle gets a one of the... Uh, teleporters that the dimensional portals that Cisco has given around to everybody uh, gets one of those after he finds out what Oliver's been up to. Felicity spilled the beans on it and Diggle's like, nope, Oliver, no matter what you do, no matter what you think, what you try to do, I'm not letting you do this alone, brother. And Diggle came to the rescue because Diggle is the man. Love me some Diggle. Better get that ring in that crossover. But anyway, saves his butt. We got some flashbacks intercutting and in, well, not flashbacks, flash forwards into the future timeline where uh, the team our future arrow team with Connor, William, um, Zoe and uh, da, 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 Mia are kind of trying to integrate the two cities together after they took down the wall in last season. It 
the Glades and uh, Star City are coming back together. But JJ, who is leading the Deathstroke gang, is trying to like uh, just impede all of that and kind of assert further control despite the fact that everything seems to be hunky-dory bringing these people together, but he's trying to like undermine that that act that they're doing to bring everybody together and still exert his own control with his gang and kidnaps a key person in this little kind of like political movement to try to get people okay with this from what I can gather on it. And that's where that's all going. It's pretty awesome. Pretty neat to see how that they're still really rocky in the way that they're taking or working together. Mia's kind of stepping out on her own, uh, roughing things up. JJ knows who they all are. So he's able to play them because of, the only person that knows what JJ looks like now is Connor, and he's been kind of dropping the ball as far as this because it is his brother. Uh, cutting back to that, that's about where that all ends. He, the, he, JJ ends up getting the best of the future team and gets away. Uh, also, forgot to mention, in this Earth, working with Laurel, uh, she's taken up as protector of the city, and she's recruited her universe's Adrian Chase, and he is the hood in this universe, and good. He's not crazy, he's not cuckoo, but he's like, what if Adrian Chase was a good guy and put all of his efforts into being a hero? And of course, you got some alpha, like alpha, alpha competitions between Oliver and him as uh, Oliver's running around in the old hood trying to kind of lay low, but I don't know, ends up butting heads with him, but it's really interesting and hilarious the way they do it. Uh, but they end up working together as they stop Tommy. Uh, Oliver just kind of <laughs> does his best to talk Tommy out with all of his foresight, 12 years of all of this knowledge and on who Tommy is as a person is able to get through to the part of Tommy that was, bef that was uncorrupted. He was able to get through to the heart of Tommy and get him to convince him to turn off the machine, saving the day, blah, blah, blah. We get a Bruce Wayne name drop from Adrian Chase and, you know, Oliver, finally, finally, after all of this, after everything Laurel has been doing to try to redeem herself and go all along her path of uh, repentance, he tells her that this hero, this city deserves her. She is a hero. He validates her. And it was awesome because it's the first time he's honestly, wholeheartedly meant or complimented her and everything that she's been trying to do. Uh, to honor Quentin and all of that that legacy that she would have, had been left with. Um, that being said, as everything's coming to close on this, uh, Oliver visits Tommy, says his uh, goodbyes and all this stuff, and then it's at that moment when everybody's starting to get away and head out, and the episode's about to come to a close. The the internet, the telephone lines, everything starts cutting out and disappearing. There's a red mist out there. Laurel comes running into the police station. And it's like. Oh, for something's happened, something's attacking the city, and you just see like this encroaching whiteness, and as everything's being erased, kind of think like Thanos snapping, except everything, everything, not just people, places, the entire reality around them is being erased, and they all port back to Earth One at the last moment as Earth Two is completely obliterated, completely obliterated earth two is gone holy crap i mean this episode was just great altogether so many callbacks and interesting tweaks on all the relationships that were established in season one um we don't see felicity felicity in this universe is running smoke tech on her own she never worked at queen industries uh they played around with that they did say like even though uh felicity's not going to show up in this season at all She's really felt throughout it, and that's because the real Felicity is spending the entire season taking care of young Mia, and so they kind of it it fits. But like her presence and Oliver, her presence and feeling and is always there with Oliver throughout this journey because he's just weighing heavy on all of this. And there's so many emotional beats in this episode, especially seeing a a 12 year older Oliver coming back and being hit with all of this, these memories, these things he didn't get to have these, but then again, he gets hit with the same thing. And the Diggle uses to pull him back into the ropes that this world is not better with you not being here. You're gone. Thea died. Renee is corrupt. Dinah's corrupt. 
There's so much craziness going on in the world. Tommy's fallen into the darkness. And if this Oliver didn't come in to talk him out of it, he would have continued down that path and led things to a further undertaking, killing people and to a point of no return. It's, it does a really good job at showing the effect that Oliver had on the people around him, no matter how he puts himself down, no matter how he thinks about the way he's treated people, the decisions or choices he's made, that no matter what, in the end, he did have a positive effect on a lot of people, especially those in his family, even though a lot of people he lost, a lot of people got strayed from the path, but there, overall, his, his presence turned a lot of people to the better versions of themselves that we can see in this take. Um, I don't know where the Batman in this universe is. Did he die on Lian Yu? Did Deathstroke kill him on Lian Yu? That's something I'm kind of curious about. There's a lot of interesting kind of ways, things you can wonder about how everything else played out on this earth. Um, that being said, we don't know now. It's gone. It is erased. But now Earth 2 Laurel is with the team on Earth 1, uh, kind of showing us how she's going to be incorporated in the rest of the season and into the crisis event. Um, that being said, man, this was a killer first episode. I got emotional. I loved it. The action was great. There was always a level of tension in it and just a great way to start the season. I had a, I just, I love this. It was just such a thrill ride and such a just trigger of nostalgia going back to first watching that first season. And I feel like every episode is kind of going to be like this going through. Uh, I, I don't know for certain what to expect with the rest of the season. I've got an idea. If this one was really much themed around season one, maybe each episode leading up to the crisis event itself will uh, theme around one of the pre-existing seasons. Kind of give us a different spin and pay homage to everything. And they did say that everything in this season up until the end is going to be like a love letter to every season of the show. So I wonder if that's kind of going to be the uh, the pace that they're setting themselves for. Like episode two will be themed about a lo being a love letter to season two, where this was a love letter to season one. Having the you failed this city line coming back into play and along with Malcolm Merlin, the undertaking, Moira that all of that and Thea, all these key moments in there. I'm really curious to see where this goes from here. And I just, this was such a great episode. Oliver through all of his determination, Diggle man is just there for him. I love their relationship. I love their dynamic. At first I was like, how did this Diggle figure that out? Because he didn't cause it's not earth two's Diggle. It's earth one's Diggle. And he is following Oliver because he's not letting his brother go down without a fight. For his own whether oliver wants it or not he is being there i love it to death man i love their dynamic whoo diggle 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 what you gonna do with the big fat butt diggle 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 anyway man that was such a good episode what did you guys think I, I got nothing else to say for this i want to know what you all thought what did you guys think of this episode what do you what are your ex expectations now that that's kind of been set with this first episode for the rest of the season? Sound off in the comments. Let's talk about this episode in the comments below after the video. We'll carry on the conversation. And thank you guys for hanging out. If you like this video, support the channel by liking, commenting, subscribing. And if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments what you didn't like. But we will catch you guys next week for our next follow-up on episode two of the final season of Arrow. Take care, everybody.